Hey, hello, Cappuccino. This is from the chapter four review, page 200, problem number 14. I was asked to take a look at this. So let's see if I can get this menu thing out of the way. All right. So um, we were given an arithmetic sequence and we're given the one, two, three, four first terms of this arithmetic sequence. So that means we know that if you add some number to the first term, you get the second term. We call that the common difference. So I'll use the letter D. And then if I add that same number to the second term, I get the third term. And if I add that same number again to the third term, I get the fourth term. So this is what we've got to work with. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a giant system of equations. So I can start with the first one and I can say 7 plus D is equal to 3A plus B. And I can also say 3a plus b plus d. So the second term plus d is equal to the third term. And I can say the third term plus d, so 5a minus 6b plus the common difference, is equal to 2a plus 9b plus 4. So I have a system of equations. And I have three equations and I have three variables. So just like we can solve a system of equations when we have two variables, like x and y, if we have two equations that both have x and y in it, we can solve using elimination or substitution. We can do the same thing here because we have three equations and we have three variables. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some substitution. Um, so I need to get one of the letters by itself. So I think I'm going to rearrange this first equation. I'm going to minus 7 from both sides. So I'm left with D is equal to 3A plus B minus 7. Okay, so I just took the 7 and minus it from both sides. So I have this. Now I can substitute in for D. I can substitute it in here and here into my other two equations. And then I'll have two equations in two unknowns. And I can use elimination or substitution to solve those. OK, so this was equation one, equation two, equation three. I'm going to take my equation one, and I'm going to substitute this in for my D. OK, so I'm doing my equation two here. I have 3A plus B plus, and then I'm going to put all this in, 3A plus B minus 7 equals 5a minus 6b. And I can go ahead and combine like terms and simplify all of this. So 3a plus 3a is 6a. Um, b plus b is 2b minus 7 equals 5a minus 6b. Let's go ahead and get my a and b's on the same side of the equation. So I'm going to minus my 6a from both sides. And I'm going to minus my 2b from both sides. So that's going to leave me with negative 7 is equal to negative a minus 8b. Okay, so this is my equation number 2 now that's been simplified. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing for equation number 3. So I have 5a minus 6b plus d, and remember d is all of this, 3a plus b minus 7 is equal to 2a plus 9b plus 4. Now I'm going to simplify this, get everything, all that a and b over to the right-hand side. So first I'll combine like terms. So I get 8a negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5b minus 7 is equal to 2a plus 9b plus 4. Okay, let's get A and B over to the other side. So minus 8A minus 8A plus 5B plus 5B. And I don't want this 4 over here, so I'm going to minus 4 from both sides. Minus 4, minus 4. All right, so I'm left with negative 4. My, I'm sorry, negative 7 minus 4 is negative 11. 2 minus 8, negative 6. 9 plus 5, 14. So there's my, that's my third equation now rewritten. So now I have a system of equations that I can solve. So I'm going to take these two equations and I'm going to stack them. 
negative 7 is equal to negative a minus 8b, and negative 11 is equal to negative 6b, oops, sorry, 6a, plus 14b. I like using elimination. Um, if I multiply this first equation by negative 6 on both sides, I will get a positive 6a here. So I'm going to multiply this and put it underneath. 6 times 7 is 42. Negative times a negative is a positive. Negative times a negative is a positive. Right. Now I can add these together, and my a's are going to eliminate. So let's see. 42 minus 11 is, what, 31? And 48 plus 14, 48 plus 10 is 58, 62. Divide both sides by 62 to get the B by itself. Oh, what do you know? That's one half. 31 is half of 62. So I ran out of room here. But B is equal to one half or 0 0.5. Now I can go back. I'm going to let you finish it off. You can go plug this back in for um, into either one of these equations, solve for A, and then after you have both A and B, plug it into this equation. Whoops, where am I? Plug it into this equation, and you can get D. Okay, it's important that you get the letter D, even though part A doesn't ask for letter D, but you're going to need it for the next step. Okay, so go ahead and make sure you solve for letter D. All right, so a lot of work, but that's uh, there is another way of doing this uh, using matrices that we will hopefully eventually get to. But for right now, this is what we know how to do. Okay, so then the second part of 14, so that was A, where you had to solve for A and B. The second part says, um, it asks something about, oh, I don't have my book open, sorry, but it asks something about um, what term number will get you a minimum value of a thousand if you add how many how many terms do you need to add together what's the least number of terms you need to add together to get a sum of a thousand all right so i looked at my formula packet i said oh i gotta have some formulas about sums of series okay and right here sum of n terms of an arithmetic sequence we know this is an arithmetic sequence so we can get the sum of a certain number of terms by doing the number of terms divided by two, parentheses, two times u sub one means the first term, plus number of terms minus one times d. See, I told you we were going to need d again. All right, so if you solved for d on part a, you would have gotten that d is equal to 2.5. So you need that. u sub one, the starting term, well, that was given to us in the book. That's the number seven. And we do not know n, okay? So we don't know n. We have to find n. So I'm going to write down the formula. S sub n, again, this is from my formula packet, is equal to n over 2 times 2 times the starting value plus n minus 1 times the common difference. Okay, so let's plug in what we know. And we know, um, we know that we want the sum to be at least 1,000. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and set it equal to. I'm going to try and figure out, well, what term would give me 1,000? And then it would be bigger than that. Um, if we can't get exactly 1,000, we know we want the next term. Anyway, we'll get to that in a minute. I'm just going to set it equal to 1,000. Um, or you could have put in, we want the sum we want the sum to be greater than or equal to 1,000. You could do it that way as well. OK, we don't know n. That's what we're trying to find. We do know the starting value, the first term, is 7, because that was given to us in the book. Uh, again, we don't know n. And we do know the common difference. You would have solved for that in part A. After you had found A and B, you can plug it in to find the common difference. All right, so now I'm going to simplify this. So I have 14, and I'm going to go ahead and distribute this plus 2.5n minus 2.5. And now um, I can simplify this. 14 minus 2.5, well, minus 2 would be 12, so that would be 11.5. And, 
Okay, so now I want to distribute n over 2. A um, couple ways I can do this. These are already kind of nasty little numbers. So do I really want to divide them by 2? So what I can do is I can get rid of this divide by 2 by multiplying both sides of the equation by 2. That way I'm not going to get even nastier little decimals. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 2. So I get 2,000. The 2s are going to equal 1. 2 divided by 2 is 1. And so then I have n times 11.5 plus 2.5. Oh, this is looking like something we can solve. So if I distribute this, I get 11.5n plus 2.5n squared. It's a quadratic. What do you know? Okay, so I can go ahead and set it equal to zero so I can solve it. At this point, you can go ahead and use your graphing calculator. I think it's a good idea. What did I do with my graphing calculator? I now misplaced it. There it is. So um, we could put it into our graphing calculator as is and see where does this intersect this. Or we can set it, move the 2,000 to the other side, use a quadratic formula. There's a bunch of options we have. Let's go ahead and just see what happens if we put in y equals 2,000 and y equals 11.5 plus, oh, x, sorry, 11.5x plus 2.5 x squared. Let's go ahead and see what happens if we graph these. My window is all bizarre right now. So let me, as soon as it's done chunking away, I'll change my, my window. So um, let's do zoom zero. Let's see what happens if I do zoom zero. Okay, there is my y equals 1,000. And there's the other one. And I want to see where they cross each other. Okay, so notice we've got a quadratic crossing a straight line. That means there's two answers, right? But notice the one of the answers is going to be negative. The one here on the left-hand side, which we can't even see, that one's going to be negative, and I can't have a negative number of terms, okay? And as, when you have a sequence, you start counting with one. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm not going to worry about that. So here is what I want. I want my intersection. So five, first curve, second curve, guess. Okay, so they are crossing at n is equal to 26.07. Okay, so we don't get this value, or rather we don't get this 1,000 until n is a little more than 26. So since we're talking about um, a sequence, there is n can be only whole numbers. It can only be counting numbers. n can be equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. It can be 26. It cannot be 26.07. So 26 would be too small. If we were to put that in for our n, we would get less than 1,000. So that means the answer has to be 27. That is the term that will go over our 1,000 mark. And you could plug it in and double check it. Um, we could do, we could do that. Let's go ahead and do that. So if I um, get out of here, I have 27 divided by 2 times 14. Let's see, we'll just do this. Oh, I should have done it here, but that's okay. I'll go ahead and do it up here. Uh, 14 plus n minus 1. If n is 27, that would be 26 times 2.5. Okay, and there it is, 1,066.5 on term 27. Okay, so our answer here then is the term that goes over, that exceeds 1,000, is going to be term number 27. If I did this for 26, if I put in... If I take that and I change this, if I go down one, make that a 25, and make this a 26, see how I'm 994.5. So term 26 would be a little bit under 1,000, but I need term 27 to go over. Okay, so that was question 14. The next video is going to be question 15, which is crazy hard. Crazy hard. All right. How do I stop this thing?